This Quanchang radio has been getting some attention of late due to its low cost and features. Its form factor seems to have a lot of curb appeal and it seems to be positioned as the main competition to those popular recreational Baofeng radios. When I went for a hike recently, I took it along. As soon as I lost line of sight, I also lost the ability to communicate. As I was only about one mile from my contact, my first suspect was this stock antenna. So then I decided to have a closer look and to its measurable performance metrics and then I compared it to a tuned aftermarket antenna such as this one which in this case is our modified uh, tuned Smiley 5 8 wave search and rescue antenna and then I took off and went for a walk up Tunnel Mountain and ended up on the facing side of the valley which is a distance of about 1.5 kilometers or one mile between these two points and then I did a test which was line of sight between these two points here to see what type of reception we would get and I got a pretty clear signal of 5 by 5 both back and forth then what I did was I went around behind this ridge and you can see here as we zoom in I just simply went from around this point around the back here so that basically what we're looking at here is I had a bit of terrain above me perhaps maybe uh, the uh, vertical distance would have been 20 to 30 meters over my head where the ridge was higher than I could see. So I could no longer see the other point, the other end of this line. And I tried again and I had zero reception. So I thought because the distance between uh, these two locations was maybe 100 meters, I may be able to bring it down. And my first suspect was the stock antenna on the Quangsheng and so I decided I would investigate that a little bit further and that's what we're going to do right now. First of all we will look at the characteristics of this radio using a dummy load that is rated for 5 watts which is the same as the radio itself. We'll start by looking at the forward power which is at 4.4 or 4.3 watts. When we place the stock antenna on we can see it loses about 1.2 watts. When we add a tuned antenna to the radio, we can see a forward power of 4.4 watts, which is an improvement over the stock antenna. And last, we will look at what the theoretical best standing wave would be, and that's what we'd expect to find as our best case scenario. We will look at the standing wave on the stock antenna, and we're seeing that it is a little over three, more approaching four at 3.7. Finally, we will look at the standing wave on the tuned antenna and we keep in mind here that we are optimally looking for lower values, which are better, and we want anything under three as our preference. What we're getting here is 1.6 uh, to 1.65, somewhere in that range. We've placed our stock antenna on to the Nano VNA now and we will initiate a new sweep. Keep an eye on the green shaded part of the plot and what will happen will be uh, the curve for the stock antenna will show up here in, when the sweep is finished and you will then be able to see the difference between this curve which outlines the performance of the tuned antenna against the stock antenna. So we'll start our sweep now. It does uh, uh, three sweeps and so that's why we're going there. And the new line that you can see here is the stock antenna. And that would be here. So now what I'm going to do is reposition the markers. We can see that the uh, best part of the stock antenna shifted itself over and th 
the standing wave of 1.2 we find at 144.8 so it's just above beginning of the amateur band however the entire range does fit within the amateur band because if we look at three we hit the top of the amateur band uh, and we're a little bit above it at 148.4 so the stock antenna has a slightly tighter range in terms of what it will cover the smiley tuned antenna and you can see that uh, it degradates in the signal more rapidly if you follow that line rather than the tuned antenna. Now I didn't have a smiley center tuned antenna in the range of 140 to 150 so what I'm using is a 145 to 155 smiley tuned antenna and let's look at the range of that one for comparison purposes and again for education and entertainment. If we go back here to the bar where the standing wave is set at 3, we can determine what falls above and below. And when we go down here to the x-axis, we're seeing here that we're around 143.6 at the beginning of the range where we have the sweet spot for a standing wave and it extends over to about here which is roughly just above 155 megahertz so we have a 10 megahertz window with a uh, aftermarket tuned antenna and with the stock antenna we have an 8 megahertz window. So the aftermarket antenna has a slightly better sweet spot for the lowest part of a standing wave, although they are fairly close. And the tuned antenna gives you about 20% more in terms of your window for the sweet spot in the middle here at about 150. We'll go to the 60,000 foot view for anyone who may be interested in what the performance characteristics of the stock antenna would be when you move out to UHF. And what we're seeing illustrated here now is a wider bandwidth that spans from the beginning of the VHF handband over to the end of not only the ham UHF but also the popular FRS frequencies that are in the UHF and those popular frequency ranges are denoted here by the darker green columns in our plot as you can see here so to summarize it looks like when you're interested in VHF and operating with the stock antenna you have an acceptable range which starts at 144 which is where we started our graph here and moves out to 153 or we could round it up to 154 and it is very close to the acceptable standing wave of 3 that we have there beyond 153.780 it would not be advisable to use the stock antenna until you get over here to where marker number two is situated and that one is at 395 megahertz and the acceptable range expands from 395 megahertz right through to the end of what we have plotted here of 470 megahertz and probably obviously goes well beyond until it hits the acceptable standing wave ratio of 3 if we were ex to extrapolate this graph beyond that point. And finally for those that may be interested in what the air band capabilities of the stock antenna are because the Quansheng is um, often quoted as an alternative for folks that are looking for a budget solution to listening to airband, 
this is what you're looking at and what this is demonstrating is that the stock antenna would not be your best choice for monitoring the air band with this Quanshang radio. Um, if the standing wave isn't properly matched to the impedance of the radio or the antenna, it can cause significant signal reflections and that reduces the efficiency of the antenna system. It affects both the transmission and the reception capabilities. So because of the decreased signal strength and the increased noise, the overall degraded performance of this would indicate that you'd be better off to have a tuned aftermarket antenna suitable for airband reception if you wanted to use this radio for that purpose. And I'm going to see if I can actually do a demonstration in a subsequent video of the differences between using those two antennas in the field to actually receive some airband stuff. Next we're going to take a tuned antenna up tunnel and see if we can chat with the base from where we were before when we couldn't make contact. This is what the front side looks like and here's what the back side looks like as we're looking down into the valley. I'm on the back side behind the ridge right now. How do you copy in terms of signal strength? Four. Okay, stand by one. I'm going to move to the front side now and we'll do a comparison in terms of signal strength. When you're on top of Tunnel Mountain at night and you're looking west on the Vobe Valley, this is what Banff Town Site looks like, and this is what the endangered white bark pine looks like, and this can result in thousands of dollars of fines if someone cuts one down. 